Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're going to be reviewing the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Nate Wade Subaru here in Salt Lake for giving me some time with this Crosstrek. I'll include a link to the website in the description down below so you can check what they have currently. I also include a link to my car buying guide. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a 2.5 liter flat four cylinder that goes through a CVT. Fuel economy is 25 around town and then 29 on the highway with power outputs being 182 horsepower and then 176 pound-feet of torque. Now before I move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Now when it comes to colors, this copper color I think looks really sharp. We've got the glare decal there on the hood. It's supposed to again help out with glare while off-roading. And then really cool new headlight design here for the Crosstrek. And then I love the fog lights here in the wilderness package. You can see the front end is a lot more aggressive with all of the cladding in general. And yeah, putting it all together, it's a cool looking Subaru. So our turn wheel setup is 225 by 60 by 17 in the front and over in the rear. And I really like these wheels all blacked out, satin and finish. And then yeah, you've got real all-terrain tires. You can always put the more aggressive tires if you want. Big chunky fender flare setup. You can see the rest of that on the side as well. Wilderness badge. Got the roof rails there at the top too. And look at that. Again, this copper color makes it look really good. Now this leads us to the key fob. We have our lock and unlock function. We got the opening for the rear hatch as well. And it's already unlocked. So just got a little popper here. It is hydraulic for the opening function. Got a car recover built in from the factory. Let's see wilderness here on the mat and you notice they give you a lot of stuff to cover items so that it's easier to clean up afterwards but yeah solid with the storage when you're all done just pull that down of course subaru logo front and center got the cool taillights subaru wilderness badge and then you can see again at the bottom it's very stylized and you'll notice this has much better approach and departure angles compared to a regular cross track now this leads us inside where you can see you've got this nice soft touch here with the stitching throughout and then you can see that gray continues onto the seats and then popping in leg room's good we've got some usb ports here and then headroom overall it's actually pretty good it raises up there a little bit and now popping up front, again we've got all of the nice stitching and soft touch here down below as well. All of our window controls, front two are automatic, you get your mirror adjustments, blind spot monitoring with the mirrors. And here's the front seat, wilderness there at the top. Nice trim all down the center. Adjustments on the side. And then again we got more nice trim on the dash. Now here's a quick look at the steering wheel. Nice trim all around. Very rugged looking and feeling. Paddle shifters there on the back. Bunch of practical controls up front, including our cruise control with our lane centering. You've got your little drive mode select there as well. Volume and voice command controls there. Subaru just gives you traditional stocks, which is the way to go if you ask me. And then here is the gauge cluster. Pretty simple setup. You can see information there in the center. And then I like that they did analog gauges ages a lot better over time. Back of camera reverse, we do have trajectory lines to turn with the steering wheel. You can see the X modes. Got your snow dirt, deep snow mud. And then this is Subaru's infotainment system they have in all their cars, modern cars at least. It's quick to respond. It's easy to use in general. And then on either side, you've got radio controls and climate controls. And so, yeah, it's it's got everything that you want. And then it's very nicely integrated here into the dash. Speaking of dash, I think that's pretty cool looking. Same thing with that trim down below. Decent storage in the glove box. Phone charging pad there. Shifter here for the CVT. Got your parking brake down below. Got our little heated seat controls right here. Charging port, just a cup holders. More storage, nice trim here on the top. And then we've got a center up top as well. So there's a lot of glare, so it's kind of hard to see the window sticker. Um, but anyways, total MSRP on this is 37,244. Wilderness package. Let's see how it performs. Oh, 
cross track wilderness let's set off and something that i think is cool for the 25 model year is the cross track the 2.5 is going to be in every single car except for the base model so subaru is kind of finally admitting that hey <laughs> excuse me most people don't want the 2.0 most people want the 2.5 and I really do think it'd be cool if Subaru did a turbo cross track. The problem, the only problem, just all the pricing crossovers you have right now in Subaru. Because you've got a lot of price crossover with the cross track and the Forester, and then the Forester and the Outback, and yeah, it's just, um, and it would make it worse if there was a turbo cross track. So I understand. It's an interesting setup. And that's one of the, I would say it's one of the downsides about being a, an automaker with, that makes more affordable cars is that you have so much price crossover, right? If, if your cars are over $100,000, right? Like Mercedes, for example, a lot of them, it's, you can do a, you know, $10,000 price difference between two different models easily. But you know, when everything's, most of Subaru's cars are sub $40,000. I mean, they've got, you know, Outback and Ascent that now have several models over that and even over 50, but Impreza, Crosstrack, Forester, BRZ, WRX, like a lot of the packages with those cars are sub 40 grand. So that means there's a lot of, a lot of crossover. Anyways, I love the seats in the wilderness packages. They're nice, easy to clean seats. Whenever I look at seats like this, I'm just like, oh, so in love. I wish that more automakers would do seats like this because it just makes, especially when you have kids, man, it makes such a big difference. My wife and I cleaned out our car the other week and it's got perforated leather. Can't get it clean. <laughs> so, did the best we could. Suspension's also nice. It's kind of like more uh, floaty compared to a regular Subaru. Kind of got a little bit more clearances and everything. And this engine's, I mean, Supers are not fast, right? Cross tracks at least. Turbo Supers are actually pretty quick. But this feels, this feels good. It's not bad. On the highway, yeah, of course it's gonna be a little bit slower, but just around town, it's actually got a decent low end to it. So, not a bad setup whatsoever. Thing I have been wondering is if Subaru will ever go to a torque converter automatic for these wilderness packages because that is the one thing that does hold the wilderness back a little bit is that it's got a CVT for you know off road use. CVTs tend to struggle to put the power to the ground off road, especially you know it also doesn't have a low range that doesn't help either. But I think Subaru is kind of intending this as more of a dirt road type deal rather than rock crawling. See, it's not like a monster, but it's not bad either. Especially when you compare it to other cars in the segment, it's it's decently peppy. So let's get into summing things up here with this cross trick wilderness. I think that Subaru did a good, a good job, like in terms of marketing. Man, Subaru has done a good job with this wilderness because. You talk to a non-car person and you just show them this and they think this is like the most rugged, off-road capable thing they've ever seen. I'm serious. Like people that don't know anything about cars, they look at these and they like, that's that looks like that could climb up some stuff. And so yeah, marketing Subaru, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Um, and I love the interior. I love how it drives in general. But when it comes down to like the, the nitty gritty, the mechanical and everything, this isn't like a Jeep or a Bronco. And and I think that that does get some people in trouble when they buy these wilderness, because I've seen it happen where people get like an Outback or a Forester or one of these cross track wildernesses thinking they're gonna be able to do uh, Jeep stuff with it. And then come to find that it just isn't that type of off-roader. Uh, I, I mean, I've, I've seen it happen. Like I'll see these traded in at like a Jeep dealership or a Ford dealership for one of those cars because they go, oh, if I want to actually like scale rock walls, I should probably get something that's meant for that. So 
overall cool package uh, as long as you're looking at it for what it is again this is a sub forty thousand uh, dollar you know tfl says soft rotor i think that's a good way to describe it sub forty thousand dollar soft rotor and it, it does a good job at that it does a good job like you take this down dirt roads you take this snowy roads it would do great like a lot of people ski here in utah this is a great ski car that's another example so let me know your thoughts